TikTok is an application used by billions. It's a place on a daily basis where people share content, you view that content of people dancing, doing funny challenges, sharing cute little puppy videos, and also doing wonderful things such as faking... disorders. Yes, welcome back to another video about TikTok. Now, yes, if you didn't know, recently over the last few years, there's been a trend of people on TikTok faking certain mental health problems and also certain disorders like Tourette's and plenty of other good, pleasant, and wonderful things out there. And recently, yes, I did discover on this housecape of an application known as TikTok that there is another case of seemingly somebody faking a disorder. Meet TikTok creator Alphaburr. At one point of time, they were mainly known for their singing videos and just in general live streams where they did, I mean, things which would be considered a little bit odd. I'm not really going to go into specifics because there is a main reason for why I'm making this video because recently they were called out after there was leaked DMs where they basically exposed themselves for lying about Tourette's and also Alphaburr admitted in multiple live streams to lying about certain disorders. And yes, as I said, this isn't the first case of a TikToker lying about having a certain disorder. In fact, on YouTube, there's actually become a specific genre of people who go through people on TikTok lying or they criticize people who they think are lying about having certain disorders. And to be honest with you, I can get why this is a genre which has become popular because it is a very aggravating thing for somebody to lie about having a specific thing because it can damage communities. It can damage the perception of people that actually do have things such as Tourette's, people who are autistic, people that do actually have ADHD. It can put a very negative light on those people and damage them on the long term. So what I want to do in today's video is inject a little bit of nuance because that's a word which I think a lot of people on the internet need to discover. Look at this word right now, nuance. It's something which a lot of people don't like to have and it's something that we will be having today where I ask the question of why does this keep happening? Seriously, why do people keep faking having Tourette's, ADHD, being autistic? Why? Why do they do that? And also, I need to ask you the question of, is it time we just shut down this app known as TikTok? And that was a trick question, because obviously the answer is, well, obviously you should subscribe to my YouTube channel, because yes, I am asking you very politely, and I would very much appreciate it if you did so, because today we are speaking about something which required a lot of research, and, you know, I just appreciate it. There's nothing I can really offer you other than my, my little pretty face. So uh, if you could do so, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to hit a million subscribers, and it would mean... Well, it would mean, mean a little bit to me. It wouldn't mean the world. I can't lie to you, but I'm joking it, please. I'm on my knees. But yes, let's actually get into the main topic of today, which of course is Alphabet. Now, the reason I'm speaking about Alphabet is because the topic did actually pique my interest. I saw it and I thought this is something that I could speak about and actually lead into a broader, wider conversation. And it's kind of weird because whilst I do think what Alphabet has done is disgusting, I also... I, I feel a little bit of empathy. I, it's, it's quite... I, it's, I, there's some things I need to lay out in this video to not make people get mad at me for one, but also just to explain my thoughts and why I think this whole issue is, is far more complicated than we actually realize. But also, I need Alphabet to understand what she is doing on her TikTok platform is dangerous and can severely affect the people who actually do have these disorders. But yeah, let's finally actually get into it of the clip of where Alphaba seemingly admits to faking Tourette syndrome. It was wrong of me to say I had Tourette's. That was wrong. I'm very sorry for that because, you know, I I tend to say things without thinking and that is the thing I need to stop. So that's why I've got bullet points in front of me because this is helping me kind of stay on track. Um, I was never mocking it though. I would never mock that. I know how hard it is. You don't know how hard it is, though, because the only people that know how hard it is to have Tourette's, to truly know how difficult it is to have Tourette's, is, shockingly enough, the uh, people that actually do have Tourette's. And also the term, I was never mocking it, is also a complete and utter joke. Simply pretending to have something is a mockery in itself. You are mocking something because you are pretending to be that specific thing. I'm pretty sure that's the actual Google definition of mocking. Uh, yeah, you can see it literally here. Mockery, an absurd misrepresentation or imitation of something. That's literally what you are doing. And honestly, I think it is very absurd to pretend to have Tourette's and you are definitely imitating it. So... 
y y you are definitely mocking it. But I guess the definition of actually mocking something is a little bit different for Alphabet. I think by what they mean in terms of mocking is that they weren't making it look silly or stupid by faking ticks because people have actually come out and accused Alphabet of faking ticks. As you can see in this video here, it definitely does seem that she is faking some form of mannerism which could be associated with Tourette syndrome. But despite that video and despite the video of her, you know, clearly admitting to faking having Tourette's, she actually went on the offensive and and, and denied faking ticks. I can see why you think this, but I'm about to show you some more proof in a minute that this is not um, me doing Tourette's or... So this is a video that has been taken out of context. So if anyone remembers my live streams where I used to do like acting and skits and stuff, um, this was a thing. Um, and here's Mama Kaz doing this. Nothing. All of a sudden she went like this. And I said, what are you doing? She goes, oh, she goes, that's my Tourette's. Let's go. This video has been taken out of context. Okay, so you've gotten the context there because apparently the clip was apparently out of context and that's all good, that's all well and good, but there's a little bit of a problem. Me doing me, did a little bit of research, didn't I? And uh, I found a clip where Alphaba seemingly is having tics. Tourette's. Oh, Tourette's. I've actually been referred to, um, to talk works or something like that. You know when I have my doctor's appointment for my back, I yeah. got referred there. I got off at them because I started ticking in the doctor's office, which was not fun. Accidentally. Mm. <clears throat> Shit. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> I can't. Sorry. I can't. I, I want to pause a lot because this is. Now, that definitely didn't seem like a skit. That didn't seem like a little funsy. That seemed like somebody seemingly having a, a, a tick. It was literally referred to by the other person in the live stream. And honestly, it, it seems that the comments are very clear to point this out. And you see, we're coming into a bit of a problem here, a bit of a contradictory um, timeline, pretty much. Because what we've got here is somebody who was at one point admitted to lying about these things. The next, we have DMs about how she speaks about how bad she is at lying. And we will actually get into those DMs later in this video but also we now have her seemingly actually admitting that she may possibly have Tourette's I can show you my um referral if you want to see I don't that. I don't need to see referrals the same as I wouldn't want anyone to ask for our referrals but I do think that you really do need to reconsider the things that you share and the things that you say because you are actually hurting a whole community of people in various ways and time and time you again you're apologizing for stuff and you're not meaning what you're saying. Now, I've seen you on and off my For You page for quite some time, and I steer clear of all the drama, but now you've directly impacted my child who suffers with this disability. It's not a fashion sta statement, Elfa. No. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. I'm really sorry. Of course and if I am. You've, if you've genuinely got ticks, then fine. I am the first person who will be there to support somebody, ask anybody. But I'm telling you now, if you're lying about it and you're faking it, that is absolutely disgusting. No, I'm not lying about it. I, I, can, I can show you proof, I promise. My brothers, sisters and sisters, I am honestly just a little bit confused right now, a little bit dumbfounded about what I'm actually watching. And I think the person that they were live streaming with clearly was also a little bit confused when they called them out on this. But the response to getting called out was, uh, well, you know, I... I haven't faked having Tourette since the last time, and obviously, <laughs> that's a insane thing to say but also surely that in itself is an admittance I, d I don't i don't need your proof and i don't need your promises because they don't mean anything to me but you just okay. need to understand the bigger picture of what you're saying oh, i've watched your last video about how you were saying you were going to take some time out but you're back again within five minutes and the first thing i see is everyone going on about how you're faking threats Oh, I haven't done anything since. I haven't done anything like that since. I've just been singing on live stream and performing and doing makeup. That's what I've been doing. And by that, she means faking Tourette's. So she says, I haven't faked Tourette's since then. But she also says that she's had a refer referral. And, uh, and it's all a bit confusing because there's these DMs here as well. There are videos of her seemingly having tics. And you could say, are those fake? And it's just very confusing. What is actually going on here? And honestly, I feel like this is a case study and reasoning that we kind of need to submit to the US government of how and why we should delete this application because everything that's been going on throughout this entire video, we're only like halfway or quarter way through, but 
it, is this not a real reasoning and understanding to why TikTok just kind of needs to go? I know, like, they had a whole debacle in America about deleting the app or banning the app. Maybe it's the one thing that we should actually, you know, let the government do. <laughs> but with all of these contradictory statements, it's very clear that the person they were streaming with was pretty much picking up on these lies and just messes of statements. And they called this out once again, and it resulted in this. But do you realise what you're doing to different communities of people, or are you just so self-absorbed you don't see it? No, I, I realise. I'm sorry. No, but you are I don't think you do. And sitting there putting your head down and saying you're sorry, I genuinely don't feel like you are. I feel like, yet again, you've been caught out at something and you're just I trying don't, to I, make peace and trying to make everyone feel sorry for you and be a victim. I'm because not, trust me, I've got a 16-year-old next door who is far less a victim than anybody else on this planet, especially you. No, of course, and you deserve to be heard. That's why I kept you valid, of course, a million percent. And I'm truly sorry, and I mean that with all my respect to you, because you're, that's amazing. So if you're saying, I don't understand. Okay, so hang on. Why are you apologising? If you're not faking it, then why would you apologise to me? Oh, no, I'm apologising because, you know, I'm apologising for all the hate I've gotten and stuff like that, that's why. And I'm sorry that you thought I was like, I thought you were against me, that's all. I thought you were against me, that's all. Ladies and gentlemen, I think what we have here is somebody that's just been absolutely caught for all of their lies in one moment. I mean, it's, it's truly one of the worst excuses I've ever heard. She's saying sorry because of the stuff, I, it, uh, what, what is she even saying here? Now my friends, I completely understand why a lot of people want me to go absolutely ballistic and mental and get the pitchforks out and just start screaming and going mental. I actually get that because what she is doing here is an extremely damaging thing for a multitude of reasons which I will explain later in this video, but I'm not going to go crazy. I'm actually going to have some nuance because Alphaba, to me, after some observation and research, is clearly somebody who gets a lot of shit and clearly has a lot of issues and problems. And it seems that Alphabet on a week-to-week -week basis apologizes for something. And I'm just going to try and be fair here and not like witch hunt this person. So let's talk about the tics that she refers to having here. The anxiety-induced tics. Like when I'm really stressed, I, I squeak and jitter and I can't do... you have do functional tics? You think you have functional tics? So what I'm going to do is come at this from a place of actually believing that those tics that she was having in the video that I showed you previously were actually her having very legitimate tics. And I know a lot of people will say it was attention-seeking, it was fake, it wasn't real. Don't worry, I'll get into all of that as well, but I'm going to come at this from a place of actual goodwill, even if this person you may think doesn't deserve it, but pretty much having an anxiety-induced tick doesn't necessarily mean that you have Tourette's. As you can see on the CDC websites and other health websites out there, and I do have to say I am not a health professional whatsoever, I'm just doing my research into these specific topics, probably more research than Alphabet has done in her entire life, but either way, this is not my words, this is just from these health websites seemingly led by professionals. On these websites, you can see that having a tick does not necessarily mean that you have Tourette's. And also, there are multiple forms of different disorders out there that Alphaba may possibly come under. But this leads us into the TikTok conundrum and reason number 7,224 of why we need to delete this godforsaken application. TikTok is dominated by impressionable young people. People who aren't exactly the smartest of cherries on top of the cake. Because I don't know if you guys have realised, but over the last few years, people have seemingly been trying to diagnose themselves with a lot of different things. In particular, the big old buzzword is ADHD. A lot of people on TikTok like to say that they definitely have ADHD. And this is coming from somebody that actually does have a diagnosis. And the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of these people actually don't. So my friends, it may shock you to hear, but I actually don't think this comes from a place of malice. So I don't think these people are faking ADHD for the most part for attention or anything. I actually think a lot of these people genuinely do believe that they have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I think that's what it's called anyway. I should know. I apparently do have the diagnosis. I'm not doing a good job of convincing you all. But my brothers, sisters, and sisters, the reason I believe these people aren't malicious when they're incorrectly diagnosing themselves with certain disorders in these TikTok situations, some are correct, but in some situations they're not. The reason I don't think it's malice is because 
of society. Over the course of time, people have demonized people of having disorders such as autism, ADHD, Tourette's, even mental health issues such as depression. People used to say, oh, it's all in your head. If you had ADHD, it was just a, a buzzword for, oh, you're a hyperactive kid that's been given a label to make people put you in a certain box. When I grew up as a kid, I used to not take ADHD seriously, and I blimmin' had it. And that's because when you were younger, or back before, I guess, there was less research and information into these certain fields and topics, or less normalization, we look down on these things even if we didn't realize it. I don't want to sound like a big old woke warrior right now, even though I definitely am, but pretty much society nowadays is becoming a, a bit more progressive, you know? We're becoming a bit more understanding. We like these things. We like to talk. Well, we don't like having depression. Nobody likes to have depression, but we like to accept and talk and discuss the possibility of you, I pointed at myself, that you or me having some form of disorder or mental health issue. It's because of this that people nowadays are becoming less normalized when it comes to these disorders, and that definitely is a good thing. And with that, you are probably now noticing more nowadays, as I mentioned just now, that a lot more people are claiming to have ADHD, to be maybe autistic, to have Tourette's. And that doesn't necessarily mean because they're faking. Now, I know I said that a lot of people are faking having these things, but I also think a lot of people do have these things. And the reason that they're just appearing out of nowhere isn't like they were just foul snapped into existence. No, no, no. These people always existed. But it was just back 20, 40 years ago, these things had no research, not really many labels on, no introduction to a lot of people's lives. People could have gone their entire life with having ADHD without even possibly realizing it because how society demonized it. And if they did realize it, they may not have spoken about it because of how society used to look down on these things. But now the taboo is being removed from society, we're becoming more understanding and accepting, more people are going to speak out about who they are, what they have, and what they just do in their lives. It's something great, it's something normal, and it helps us understand these issues even more. And okay, I know it might sound like a, like a weird comparison, but have you ever heard people nowadays being like, Oh, everyone's bleeding gay these days. What's with all those LGBTQ play A, B, C, D, E, F, G? You know what I mean? There's a lot of people out there that are like, well, these, these gays people have just come out of nowhere. You know, what I mean? these people, they're everywhere. Not the gays, the people that say that are everywhere. <laughs> and the question is, is that because gay people are taken over? Is this some form of gay invasion? Or even are, are all the gay people in the world faking being gay? No, <laughs> it, it's obviously not that. I hope. I think more people appearing to be gay nowadays is mainly down to the fact that throughout history and mankind, we've demonized and ostracized people for simply being who they are as human beings. In the 1980s, if you identified as being gay, you would face a large amount of social persecution, and that is putting that lightly. But nowadays in 2023, I think it's at least a little bit better. You can come out now as gay and as or just LGBTQ+, and you will, not by everybody, of course, we've got a long way to go, but it's, it's a lot better than it was in the 1980s. And of course, that's led to a lot of people being more comfortable with who they are. It's allowed them to accept them for themselves, and that's why you see a lot more gay people nowadays. It's not like they just appeared out of nowhere. It's because they were always there, but a lot of people just outright denied it throughout their entire lives, or even they just hid it from society because of the persecution that they would face if they actually came out as gay. And the thing is, is there are plenty of stories throughout history of people being gay, but they only came out about it when they were like 80 years old because they were scared their whole life of social persecution. This isn't a thing of gay people turning up out of nowhere. They always existed. And ladies and gentlemen, I completely understand it is a little bit weird to compare Tourette's syndrome and being gay is the same thing. But the point I'm trying to make here is with everything, things that get demonized throughout society, when those things are no longer demonized to a certain extent, when they're becoming less taboo, you will notice that more people become those things. For example, as I mentioned, with the depression. It used to be considered being lazy to be depressed or something like that, or not even real, just in your head and made up. But nowadays, there are more depressed people, not because everybody's randomly getting depressed, but it's because people now have more understanding of what this thing is. For example, I've had family members who I know personally who definitely have ADHD and depression, but they've never gone to get a diagnosis because during their time of growing up, they that wasn't a thing. Well, it was a thing, but it was looked down upon. And because of that, 
they've bottled these things up and it's sad and disappointing but nowadays it's changing and that's why there are so many people being expressive with who they are as a human being when you remove the taboo from any subject or anything in general you're always going to get people that then are pushed towards that thing that no longer has a taboo because they're not being ostracized for it anymore and this is why we are getting so many people now claiming what they have and who they are as human beings nowadays this is the reason and i hope it wasn't as insane as it possibly may have sounded and i hope you now don't think i'm an absolute nut job but i think that was a pretty decent <laughs> explanation but you may be thinking well how does this correlate to possibly faking a mental disorder am i saying people out there fake being gay no 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 i'm not saying that i'm i'm not saying that People don't fake being gay. And the, the reason those things don't come into each other there is because I think being gay is easier to understand than having something like Tourette syndrome. Tourette syndrome is something that needs a lot of research. And I think a lot of people out there truly do not understand this disorder whatsoever. And I think the main issue of this whole scenario comes down to misinformation. Because as I said, now society is more accepting of things like depression, like anxiety, like autism, like just everything in general like we're becoming more progressive it leads to more dialogue and conversation and it kind of leads to some problems because on tiktok nowadays you will have somebody sharing their genuine experience with again adhd the only reason i'm using adhd here is is because i have adhd but yeah people will be airing their thoughts and opinions and how they deal with adhd on a daily basis and some little some little 14 year old may hear that and think oh oh that kind of relates to me now i have adhd no, 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 no. Let's not do that. Let's not do that! We've never had a point of time where so much information is so easily accessible, but also the information from just other people, other human beings, not companies, but just listening to people's life experiences. We are now hearing someone's experience with autism, someone's experience with Tourette's. These experiences haven't always been publicized to a massive degree, like they are being publicized on TikTok, and this is being exposed to so many people out there. Basically, the problem is, with us being so comfortable, weirdly enough, Enough, it's actually caused the issue of because we have so much dialogue people now instantly correlate other people's struggles with their own it's actually a pretty normal human thing to do to see somebody struggling with somebody to relate to it and attach yourself to it i don't actually think a lot of people do this out of malice i think a lot of people are just looking for possible reasons to why they act in a certain way and we will get into the cop topic of self-diagnosis because i actually have a little controversial opinion about that but i think because of the thing that i mentioned just now the taboo of mental health and disorders being removed and people being more comfortable and accepting of these things and then combining that with TikTok and how these things are being conjoined and so many people are experiencing this and then thinking that they possibly have this thing because of somebody's slightly correlating experience to their own personal experience things are just starting to get a little bit messy because we look at people like Alphaba the main subject of today's video and it's very clear to me that this person probably doesn't exactly understand what Tourette's syndrome actually entails the details of it and just in general why they may or may not have this disorder so i i i do that so i basically like i squeak and i do that and that's that's basically what i i can't help it because I, I i don't know but then it could also move into the other specific angle because there are two angles here there are the possible angles of misinformation and people just in general not understanding certain disorders and getting a, a little bit conflated with them by accident but then there's also well, attention seeking. Because whether you deny it or not, people do find fascination in this sort of thing. And it's mainly down to the fact that having something different to what most human beings may possibly not have can interest a lot of people. And people can use this to get attention, to get views, to get, I guess, even out of some situations, use it as an excuse to, to, to get away with bad behavior. People have done it over the course of TikTok and YouTube. And it's a very embarrassing and horrifying trend, again, for a multitude of reasons but it does exist we can't deny that attention seeking people out there do lie about having disorders which is just absolutely insane to me because these disorders aren't something to glorify but sadly social media's glorification of things like again like adhd has now caused people to think nothing of it when they're going around pretending to have some specific disorder and it's so unbelievably damaging for people that actually do suffer with tourettes people who are autistic people who do have tourettes and i think the question question is with Alphaba, 
is which one does she fall under here? Attention seeking? Or just a misunderstanding? Well, honestly, it's quite depressing to say, but I'm more leaning to maybe the attention seeking aspect of things. And I don't say that lightly. I think that's a very harsh observation to make of somebody. But based on the fact that we have so many lies here, so many apologies, backtracking, and contradictions, I think that there is nothing more I can really take from this of somebody who is using very serious disorders for their own benefit on their social media platform. And that does then lead us into the DMs that I've mentioned a few times throughout this video. And these DMs are honestly just as criminalizing as everything else that she said. And by criminalizing, I don't mean she's gonna go to jail. I just mean she's probably gonna go to social media TikTok jail. Pretty much in these D DMs, what she says is that she can't stop lying FFS. Sometimes she can't help lying and she doesn't know why. And she didn't mock anything. She lied, yes, but I never mocked anything. People are sending me threats and telling me no one would care if I, well, I, I think you know where that's going. And if you are sending messages like that, please don't. But I think Alphaba really needs to understand there is a problem here. Even if it's from an innocent POV of, oh, she did accidentally misdiagnose herself by, I don't know, getting told something from TikTok or reading something and she didn't really understand the true nature of Tourette's and every other disorder out there. Or even the other one of she's possibly attention seeking and lying about absolutely everything, which I'm kind of leaning more towards. Regardless of which angle we're on here, this is dangerous. This is very, very negative for people who actually have these disorders, as I keep saying, but I'm actually going to explain why. And that's why we're going to get the board. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the board. And I'm not trying to show it in the light right now because, you know, reflections exist. But pretty much what this board shows is a process, a process of how this all works. As you can see, we've got Alphaba. And when Alphaba comes and speaks about their disorder, lies about the disorder, it leads to two specific scenarios. Scenario number one being Alphaba gets criticism exposed. I don't even know if you can read that right now, but pretty much that's the end goal for the most part when it comes to Alphaba. People don't trust her anymore and it ends there. But the thing is, the second scenario leads to a lot more things if you can actually see that. I'm just going to read it for you in case you can't, but it says, from lying about disorders, it leads to people trust less people with actual disorders and then those disorders start to get demonized again because that's something that is happening which I've noticed. A lot of people are starting to say that certain disorders aren't even a real thing, mainly because because of people on TikTok that fake this stuff. It's horrific, it's disgusting, but it is a cause and effect of these situations when people lie about this stuff. And then with the disorders getting demonized again, it leads to less understanding, less help, and lives are made worse. And society in general just regresses. It's a sad state of affairs, but Alphaba, you need to understand that your actions have consequences, not just for you, but so many other innocent people that have no role or part in your personal situation. But yes, with all of that, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers, sisters, and sisters, that then leads us into the next topic of self-diagnosing. And I know it's a big old controversial subject, but let's just go through the definition first off and foremost. Self-diagnosis is the process of diagnosing or identifying medical conditions in oneself. It may be assisted by medical dictionaries, books, resources on the internet, past personal experiences, or recognizing symptoms or medical signs of a condition that a family member previously has. And now my friends, you may be actually quite stunned to hear this, but I actually think self-diagnosis can actually be a pretty, pretty good thing. I know, I know, crazy, right? And shock horror, ladies and gentlemen. I actually self-diagnosed myself with ADHD even before I even got my ADHD diagnosis. But the reason I did this, ladies and gentlemen, is to cope with the thing that I genuinely thought that I had. I did try and get help for it, but there are waiting lists in the UK. Despite the free healthcare we have, it's not just a waiting list. It's a waiting blimmin' marathon. It's like three years. It's ridiculous. So many people are genuinely suffering with undiagnosed ADHD, but because of the waiting lists in this country, they cannot get that diagnosis and they cannot afford private healthcare. So how do they cope? Well, by self-diagnosing. And the problem is, is there is a bit of an ethical dilemma here because with self-diagnosing being, I guess, approved by myself in, in a way of saying it's not the worst thing in the world, 
you will get people that lie. It's it's a sad thing. And I think the only thing we can do here is say to, to watch out when people do, to call that out when we see it, for all the reasons that I've explained so far in this video to why it negatively impacts people that truly do have these disorders and mental health issues. And I also think to shun self-diagnosing is a little bit classist in itself because not everybody can afford to go to a doctor, an expensive doctor. Because even in this country where healthcare is free, it's pretty much impossible to get a diagnosis but in a country where it costs thousands upon thousands it's even more of a struggle so i completely understand why people will do their bit to just get by their day-to-day -day lives and help themselves out i really don't have a problem with that and i would be shocked if anyone out there truly did now i will say if you are self-diagnosing you are not an expert and i highly recommend don't go out and tell people to to do the same, I guess. And by the same, I mean not telling your friend who says, oh, I I can't look at my screen for longer than 20 minutes. Do I have ADHD? Don't tell them that they have ADHD is what I mean. It was a misinput. If you think you may have something great, try and help yourself out, but also try and get professional help if you really can. But don't go around glorifying ADHD because that's something which I've noticed a lot of people are doing. People are acting like it's this wonderful quirky thing. It's not a quirky thing. It's a disorder which can genuinely ruin people's lives. So many of these disorders which we've spoken about can ruin people's lives. So let's not glorify this stuff. Let's not take it in jest. Let's take this thing seriously. As I said, there is a misinformation problem. With people like Alphaba, when you come at this at a nice point of view, as I mentioned earlier, you can still see that there is misinformation here which really needs to be fixed up. People need to start speaking about the fact that people really don't truly understand these disorders. As much as we've removed the taboo from society, I think we now need to move on to stage two of actually getting down to the nitty gritty and understanding mental health issues and certain disorders out there because otherwise we are going to witness consequences which do affect the people that actually suffer these disorders it's great that we can now speak about these things for all of the reasons that i've discussed in this video but as i said there are some negative connotations which we do need to realize i know it's not a, a, a nice topic to speak about but there are going to be people that take how like comfortable we are with mental health and disorders now and use that to their advantage but there's always going to also be the case of people that just accidentally think that they have a specific thing because of what somebody said on TikTok. These are pieces of misinformation that we really need to cramp down on and prevent in the future because that will only put negative impacts on communities of people that actually suffer of specific disorders. And Alphabet may be watching this thinking, well, if you're happy with self-diagnosing, why can I not? Well, the thing is, Alphabet, you've lied. You've admitted to lying. You've done so many apologies, made so many contradictions. Autism. I can't even spell that right. Anxiety, obviously. And depression. Depression. PTSD. IBS. Potential F. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I played you that clip is because if you didn't notice there, Alphabet actually said in that clip that they are autistic. But there is a, a, a slight issue because recently Alphabet admitted to lying about an autism diagnosis. Next thing. Um, the autism thing. Okay. I will be held accountable for this. I did lie about being diagnosed for it. That's not okay at all. It isn't. It is not okay. But I want to say this. I have been referred to it. So I'm in current wait for a diagnosis. Um, and I and I was told by my CAMS worker, I've got proof of this. I had a CAMS appointment. She was called Betty. Um, I was referred. Now, it's great that you've been referred, but the problem is here, well, can you not see the own problems that you have created and established here? I hate to say it, but I I have immediate doubt to my mind, even when Alphabus speaks about their possible future autism diagnosis. And I think about that because they've not only lied about being diagnosed, but they've lied about other diagnoses. And you can see the cause and effect of what's happening here. Just by you alone lying about these things, it's installing immediate doubt into my head and I don't want that to be the case because I actually believe this person probably does have some issues that do need resolving but sadly uh, it's like the boy who cried wolf scenario you know when the wolf actually turns up nobody believes it and I think that's what we have here with Alphaba I think there could be some things that they probably do need help with but now because of everything people don't trust her and now apply that to everybody out there who do have these disorders and think how that's now going to be 
put onto them because that's just how people work for some sad sick reason. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there is now a genre of people like investigating people into faking certain disorders and I've seen in some videos people aren't even being exposed for lying about them but people are just seeing somebody have a tick and be like you're lying about it you're faking it and this comes from people who fake having these disorders it's like a massive snowball effect which is tragically making things so much more difficult for people that do deal with these things and I understand that I keep repeating that but I think it's more that I have to like nail it into people's heads because of how serious and worrying this increasing issue is becoming to conclude this video Alphaba, I think you just need to get off TikTok because it's clear that this app has absolutely plagued your brain and if you do genuinely need help and want help I do recommend you go and get it you try your best to speak to some friends speak to somebody who can care for you it would be the best option for you rather than just coming on TikTok getting yourself into controversy and spreading negative connotations for an entire community of people out there and the same goes for anybody who is doing the exact same thing if you're faking a disorder grow up get just just get, get a grip it's it's embarrassing we are in such a good po point where we are actually speaking about these issues but it's time we like conquered the misinformation aspect the lack of understanding i know things like depression have a lot of understanding but when it comes to a lot of things like tourettes i think people truly truly do not understand the nitty-gritty details and even myself don't know everything about this but i think a little bit of research goes a million miles so i'm going to end this video by saying i don't actually have a personal issue with alphaba i think what they're doing is absolutely disgusting but i can't help but just just feel a little bit uncomfortable throughout throughout the entire thing i know people want me to dunk on her and go absolutely insane and and, and crazy but it's just such a sensitive topic i i don't feel comfortable doing it so i'm going to end this video by saying if you genuinely have like had some form of experience of where people have lied about these things and it's impacted you please put your story down below please contact me let me know because i'd love to continue to cover this sort of thing in the future uh if you could get me your thoughts in the comment section as well that'd be amazing such a sensitive topic i'd love to know what you will think about it and also if you could do something more you know nice like this video please i genuinely really appreciate it if you're liked it because sometimes the likes do slack a little bit i don't want to call you out but you know i'm gonna have to and also subscribe buddy's podcast as well please subscribe to that links in the description we will have a new episode coming out this week it's all there in the description thank you very much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one peace out bye bye and have a cracking week